Very, very short. Just want to tie in with what the kids already did today on the subject of the star. Now, how many of you have ever wrapped up a present and you tried to disguise what was in that present, whether by a bigger box than what was needed, or you put something in that gift that made some different sounds? You ever done that before? A lot of us have. One Christmas, under the tree was a large, brightly colored, gift-wrapped box. It had the mom's name on that present. So she proceeded with this great anticipation to unwrap the gift. As she opened the box, she began to pull out what seemed like an endless number of crumpled up newspapers filling the box. And when she got near the bottom, she stared into the box. And with this bewildered look on her face, she began pulling out some of dad's old tools. She's like, why are these in here? All the kids are like, what, what, what is going on? Why, why did dad put all of his old tools in this box? Well, as she kept looking in the bottom corner of that big package was a small little box in there. At once she opened up that little box and the mother's eyes got really big and bright, almost as bright as the Christmas tree. As she took out that box, she opened it up, and there in the box was this family ring that she had wanted for so many years. Now, even though the outside of the big box was beautifully wrapped, and even though the crumpled up paper and the heavy tools created this clever disguise, all those things were obviously not the gift. They only led her to the true gift that was at the bottom of the box. God gave the wise men a star, but the star was not really the true gift that God had in store for the wise men. The star was just like the, the wrapping on the present. It was like the, the tools that were in the box there. And they pointed to Jesus. Now, the story of Christmas often includes the story of the Magi, the wise men, reaching Jesus. Now, it didn't happen right when Jesus was born. In fact, we think it could have been up to two years later. That's why when King Herod heard about this new king that was coming, he felt threatened. And so he asked the Magi, hey, let me know when you find him because I want to go worship him too. Actually, he wanted to go and kill him. So he had all the little boys, two and under, killed and so they were seeking out Jesus to destroy him. If you go back 1,400 years from the story of, of Jesus, you find in Numbers 24, 17, it says this. It says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. And then fast forward, oh, just a couple years, like 700 more years. So 700 years from when that first verse we read, now 700 years before Jesus comes. And we read in Isaiah 60, verse 2, See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Isaiah lets us know that this star is revealing the glory of God. It is a sign that God is about to do something amazing. He is sending his son, Jesus Christ, to be the savior of the world. And in John chapter 8, Jesus himself says this, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then in Matthew chapter 2, we read part of the Christmas story. And it says in verse 1, after Jesus was born in Jerusalem, or in Bethlehem in Judea during the king of, of Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, we just saw that, right? And asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in, east, in the east and have come to worship him. And verse nine says, after they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense 
and of myrrh. Friends, the star gave them direction. It guided them. And just as the star pointed to Jesus, you and I are called to point people to Jesus. This morning, our kids just did a phenomenal job of pointing you to Jesus. It wasn't about the star. It wasn't about the magi. It's all about the baby that was born to be our savior. The Bible says that all of us have sinned. That's a problem. Kids, how many of us have sinned before, right? We've all, yeah, we've all. Mom and dad have said, hey, you can't do that, right? We've all sinned. Adults still do that. So we desperately need a, a savior. And that's why Jesus Christ came into our world. The children were just stars pointing your attention to Jesus Christ who desires to have a relationship with you, who desires to be your savior today. Not only does, does he desire that, he desires you then to point others to Jesus, just like the kids did this morning. We are called to point people to Jesus. Now, nobody in Morrisville County is probably gonna come up to you and say, hey, where's the king of the Jews? Where's he at? I've been following the star and I'm trying to find the king of the Jews. But they will say things like, you know what? Life stinks, I'm having trouble, what do I do? Opportunity comes, and we can begin to point people to Jesus. I'd like to invite you to bow your heads with me if you would this morning. The message of Christmas is so incredible. How God himself would come into our world, would come to earth, a king, but born as a baby, and born the way that he was, the stars weren't shining. The big light didn't point the direction to where he was at, like you might see when some movie is coming out or like a signal for Batman to come. There was none of that. Came as a baby, humble, vulnerable, and he lived his life on earth showing us how to love and showing us that he wants a relationship with us. You're here this morning, and maybe you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ. I'm not asking you to join our church today. I'm asking you to be in fellowship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. If that's you this morning, would you raise up your hand real high? The kids are pointed to Jesus. Now it's your opportunity to find him as your Savior and Lord. Anyone here this morning, just raise up your hand real high. If that's you, I just want to pray a prayer, a simple prayer, uh, helping you to find Jesus as your Savior today. Anyone here at all this morning? I see one hand of a child in the back. That's awesome. Is there anyone else this morning? Thank you. Anyone else? You've never given your heart to Jesus, and this is a great day to do that, to follow Jesus. Let me pray a prayer. Thank you, kids. All right, we have a number of kids that have raised their hand. That's awesome. I see that one in the back, too. There's about five kids. There's a lot more kids responding. That's awesome. Kids ministering to kids today. Let, let me pray this prayer, and I want to invite you to repeat this with me if you would. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me and sending your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for me. I do confess that I have sinned, but I now invite you to come into my heart to be my Savior and my Lord. And help me to live a life that's pleasing to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer, the Bible says all of heaven rejoices. Right now, there's a party going on in heaven because you made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Amen. If you did that, we have a little booklet we'd like to give you. We have a kid's version and an adult version. So if you prayed the prayer, we'd love to meet you after the end of the service and give you that gift. It's a little booklet to help you grow in your faith. It's been our custom for many, many years here uh, when the kids do the Christmas program that we do an offering for a place that's called Hillcrest Children's Home. They've kind of come under a new name, a new ministry, but we'll just keep using Hillcrest for now. Uh, it, it's a great home, a great place where they're taking care of kids who, who just don't have parents to be able to provide for them. 
And so in a moment, we're going to take an offering. But before we do that, I want to show us a short little video that shows you a little bit about this ministry. Act provides Christian care for vulnerable children and youth. Since 1944, Hillcrest has provided a safe home for homeless, maltreated, and orphaned children through Christ-centered programs such as family-style care, residential treatment, respite care, and transitional living. Highlands Maternity Home has provided life-giving care for thousands of moms facing unplanned pregnancy as well as adoption services. Compact's Foster Care Placement Service provides competent care for children and youth with loving families. And with over 400,000 foster children in the U.S. every day, Compact empowers partnerships for local response. CompaCare empowers the local church to better serve vulnerable children and families in their own communities. Its evidence-based model through local churches significantly improves capacity, stability, and quality for foster children and families. By 2025, Compact envisions ministry for up to 20,000 foster children every day in America. Compact Family Services is growing its professional offerings and community partnerships. Together with our partners, we are redeeming vulnerable children with life, hope, and family. Become a Compact Partner today. Learn more at CompassionateAction.com. Part of who we are as the Assemblies of God is we want to have compassionate ministries. And uh, again, what a great opportunity that we have to bless Hillcrest Children's Home during Christmas to help them provide some gifts and things for the kids. Um, so if you're, as you're preparing that, I'd like to invite all of the ch children here, about three years of age up to grade five, uh, even if you weren't in the program, I want you to join me right now, real quick. Come on up here, real fast, guys. Real fast. All right. Come on, stars. Shooting stars. Quick, quick, quick. Uh, all the kids. Come on up. Come on up. Even if you weren't in the program, come on up, come on up real fast, real fast. You guys turn around, come on the steps here. I should have a selfie stick right now, shouldn't I? Oh, this would be, somebody take a picture with me and the kids, all right? I love having kids around. Come on up real fast. All right, kids, I want you guys now to think about this. We're going to pray for Hillcrest this morning, all right? And I want you guys to help me as we pray. We're going to be thinking about the kids that are there. And just look at these kids here. And, and they're going to represent the kids at Hillcrest that we have the opportunity to bless and to minister to this morning. So if you're making out a check, just make it out to the church, and uh, we'll make out one check to them. But let's, kids, let's pray right now, okay? For all these kids that, that aren't with their moms and dads right now, uh, but are looking for a place to have a home, let's pray this morning for them, and let's pray that these adults give generously a lot of money, all right, to help these kids out, okay? Can we do that? I love the prayer of kids, man. Let's, let's do this. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for Hillcrest Children's Home and what they're doing to minister to these children. Father, we pray that you'd help us just to partner together with them this morning to bless them for Christmas, but even beyond that, Lord, open up our hearts. Maybe even this morning there's somebody here that says, you know what? I'm called to adoption. I'm called to be a, a foster parent. Lord, we just pray that you would touch our hearts when it comes to kids. At Living Hope Church, we love our kids and we want to love these other children as well. Father, bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Would you give our kids a big round of applause again? Amen. Great job today, kids. Worship team, if you'd come on up, worship team, please. All right, kids, you can guys go back and find your parents. I'd like to invite you to stand with me this morning. We're going to close our service with one more song. I invite the ushers to come on forward and they're going to pass the offering plate for the Hillcrest home during our last song. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Creations revealing your majesty From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name, you are amazing. Oh, 
Amen. We have an amazing, amazing God. Amen. Finally, before I pray, I would like to have Pastor Sarah and Jeremy, would you guys come on up here? We just want to say a huge thank you to you for all of the hard work you put in. She's like, whew, yeah, whew. Can you thank them this morning? Thank you so much. We appreciate it very, very much. Amen. And again, great job, kids. Uh, Ashley and Phyllis as well. We appreciate you working with the youngest kids. Thank you so much for that. Um, and thank you again, kids, for using your talents to point people to Jesus. Nothing better you can do in all of life. Let me pray for you today. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and the message of Christmas. Thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for loving us, even in the midst of the things that we do that are just terrible sometimes or selfish, greedy. Lord, you love us. Thank you that you're not finished with us yet, Lord. Lord, we're a work in progress. And we thank you that you haven't given up on us. Lord, help us now as we go from this place and go into our community, into our neighborhoods to point people to the love of Jesus. Bless each one today, I pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Lord bless you. Have a great Lord's Day today. Thank you for coming.